Everybody wants to play till they realize they're playing for blood. Gray skies, what I give for Ray your son. Things change, thinking back on the other days. No matter what direction you take, it's to the grave. Everybody wants to play till they realize they're playing for blood. Gray skies, what I give for Ray your son. Things change, thinking back on the other days. No matter what direction you take, it's to the grave. I'll be honest with you, these days I rarely get really excited about judo matches, but this one is an exception. A showdown between Hifumi Abe and Joshiro Maruyama is a historic occasion in judo. Two of the best pound for pound judokas in the world compete in a single match event that will decide who goes to Olympics. Two brilliant but contrary styles of judo collide for one last time in a bout that will end the rivalry that spanned for five years. The stakes couldn't be higher. Both athletes are undoubtedly deserving of the spot. Both are at the peak of their careers. Both are favorites to win Olympics. But unfortunately, there is only one spot. So for this special contest, we look at the history of this rivalry, profiles of both contestants and some of the details that could be decisive in this match. Welcome to the countdown. Abe vs Maruyama Hifumi Abe was prodigy since his teens. At 16 years old, he became the youngest ever Kodokan Cup winner. And when in 2014, he won his first Grand Slam event on the way to the final defeating three-time world champion Masashi Abenuma, the star was born. He was just 17 years old at that point, but everyone knew that he was destined for greatness, and greatness indeed was what he showed in his matches. Going on to two-year undefeated streak in international competitions, dominating his opposition and quickly picking up two world championships in 2017 and 2018. There was no one in the horizon who could stop him. The Olympic spot was practically guaranteed, but everything changed in 2018, when new slash old challenger emerged. Joshiro Maruyama was always exciting judoka, a beautiful and elegant style of judo, but until 2018, he wasn't seen as a real threat to Abe's Olympic hopes. Previously, he had lost to Abe on both domestic and international tournaments and was seen at best as a strong alternate in national team. Coming from a family of high-level judokas, Maruyama wasn't content with his status of second best and in 2018 and 19, he finally made his breakthrough, avenging Abe on both domestic and international fronts. When in 2019, he won world championship in spectacular fashion, Abe's Olympic hopes took a huge hit and Maruyama gained the advantage in the race for the Olympic spot. A few months later, one more match between these two happened and Abe again defeated Maruyama, making their international head-to-head -head record 2-2. The decision could not be made that day. There had to be one more match. So here we are, one week away from this unique one-match event that will end the rivalry and determine the last vacant spot for Tokyo Olympics. Hifumi Abe is a representative of modern crop of Japanese judokas. He is known for his powerful style of judo, which is influenced by his inhumane upper body strength and crazy shoulder mobility. These distinct physical abilities let him do his favorite throws in a unique way that only a handful of people could replicate. Abe is one of the best offensive grip fighters in the world. With great reflexes and vice-like grip strength, he dominates most of his opponents and covers up his own weaknesses. If you can't neutralize his grips quickly, you're most certainly going for a ride. His preferred kumikata combinations are double sleeve, classic sleeve and lapel, and occasional sleeve and back grip. 
Another of his major features is his fearless, aggressive, high-pressure style of judo. He uses a lot of circular movements, some strong pulling and pushing actions to overwhelm and destabilize his opponent. When you think that you're moving away from his throws, you often end up right where he wants you to be. This aggressive style benefits him greatly, but sometimes he tends to rush with his attacks, which can lead to subpar technical execution or powering through throws with brute strength. Speaking about technique, Abe uses wide range of throwing techniques. His most successful throws are Sode Tsuriko Migoshi, Nage, and different variations of these two techniques. Abe also has dangerous Ogoshi, Osoto and Ouchigari throws. The only thing Abe does not implement in his bout is the Temiwaza, the sacrifice throws. Another element Abe does not like to use during his matches is Mewaza, ground techniques. He rarely engages in grappling. His defense is very solid as he was never pinned or submitted in international competitions, but when it comes to grappling offense, unless it's an easy score, he prefers to skip it and win his matches mostly by stand-up techniques. All in all, Abe is the true powerhouse of modern judo and at his best, one of the most dominant judogas of this decade. Yoshiro Moriyama fits a profile of more classic Japanese judoka. Crafty technician with great composure, supreme awareness on the tatami and brilliant ability to systematically pick apart his opponent and attack with blistering speed. Moriyama is known for his distinct agility and explosive footwork. In an interview to Sankei News, he said that he developed his distinct spring-like leg power during his elementary school days, doing sprints and running upstairs. This leg power has heavy influence on his style of judo. Mariyama is a master of quick dashing in attacks and sudden changes of direction. There aren't many judokas in the world who can attack with such speed and explosiveness as Maruyama. He is also an expert at setting up throws with sudden and subtle movements, fakes and combinations. Maruyama is a proponent of aesthetic judo, always trying to score with big throws rather than outpointing his opponents with smaller techniques. When it comes to grip fighting, he prefers classic sleeve and lapel grip, but also has a strong double sleeve grip. One of his less developed sides is his close distance judo, involving more close contact fighting that requires high amount of upper body strength. Also, despite being a very solid grip fighter, Maruyama can sometimes get overwhelmed by physically stronger opposition, hence why sometimes he has to adapt and attack with more unorthodox grips. His arsenal of favorite techniques is headlined by Uchimata. Maruyama has one of the most iconic Uchimatas of all time which is accompanied by a strong Sutemiwaza game, featuring such throws as Tomoenage and Yoko Tomoenage, Ukiwaza. He also has very explosive Sode Tsurikomi Goshi. Unlike Abe, Mariyama doesn't shy away from Neiwaza, where he has some slick skills, being especially dangerous with his chokes. You could say that in many ways, Mariyama is an antipode of Abe. A smooth and calculated technician who picks his spots and always stays ready to strike with his highlight reel techniques. So now that we got a small glimpse at both athletes, we can try to contemplate what factors can be decisive in this match. Most of their previous matches were in tournament finals, which means that they were competing with significant fatigue from previous matches. In this one match format, Abe could push his pace and use his physicality to the full extent, and this can be too much for Maruyama to handle. On the other hand, fatigue kills speed, so this format could be beneficial for Maruyama's explosiveness and he could catch Abe with one of his quick attacks. In their previous contests, Abe had the advantage in the gripping department. Maruyama was able to get his favorite sleeve and lapel grip only a few times, even then it didn't lead to any real attacks. Abe was able to neutralize Maruyama's offense and forced him to attack with his Uchimata from weaker double lapel grip. On the other hand, Abe was able to get his favorite grips slightly more often, concluding them with some very dangerous attempts. Due to match being in Ken Kayotsu position, Maruyama's left stance versus Abe's right, their Tsurite, their leading hands, will most likely cancel each other out. So the main battle will be for the sleeve, as both judokas will need it for their throws. 
the one who gets it first will have advantage and Abe is the favorite in this category. Another important point is that, in general, Judoka who gets outgripped gets penalized more often. But let's hope that this match will not be decided by Shidos. One more thing to consider is that both Judokas know each other extremely well. This match will be their 8th overall contest, so to win, they might need to pull off something that they haven't done extensively in their previous matches. Doing the same combinations or attacking with the same throws might be futile or outright risky. There's an old saying for these types of situations. Fool me once, shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. One last point. As I already mentioned, Maruyama has advantage in Nevaza, and Abe sometimes leaves his neck unprotected. In their previous bouts, Maruyama had some very solid grappling offense, and if he puts more effort into his Nevaza, he can succeed this time. It is unlikely scenario, but it can be one of the easiest ways for Maruyama to win. If you sum up all stats, you can see that it's extremely close matchup. All in all, Maruyama might be the craftier judoka but Abe is just a force of nature, so it's a classic match of Bull and Toreador. Abe should be the one that pushes the pace, while Maruyama the one that picks his spots for attacks. And that's why it's so fascinating, and why you can't miss it. So that's it for today's video, sorry for taking such a long break from videos. If you like this video, hit the like button, and if you want more content like this, you can support me on Patreon. Spare some change. Leave me alone, I don't have any change. All right, God bless you, sir. Oh, no, I feel bad. Here. Ah, ah. I have a long list of videos waiting to be made, and your support could make this process much, much easier. For now, I'm focusing on my second channel, Decoding Judo, so if you like this video, you should subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, don't miss this match, and stay tuned for more videos.